Welcome everyone, delighted to be together with you on this amazing day in Boston. Leaves have fallen off the trees a bit, the sun is shining and it's almost 70 degrees, so it sounds like we're in a totally different time space. One of the joys of the gallery is also sharing art that takes us to different places and spaces in our own lives and in the life of the world in which we are living, which sometimes is fraught with difficulty and upset, sometimes with joy and celebration. And the present exhibition of Mark Davis's work titled Flights of Joy certainly consistently takes the visitors and all of us in the gallery to a place of celebration, joy, and life affirming feelings. So the opportunity simply to um, talk with Mark and with Mara, an opportunity to be together with um, Tony as well, is a wonderful time just to reflect on the joy of creation and then when the creation itself provides joy and pleasure to others. So welcome. Um, we're going to begin with the cover, if that's okay, of the catalog, I think. That's what I have in front of me. So that, that um, is Flights of Joy. And simply to say that Mark's work over the past almost three decades has continued to evolve and grow in such a wonderful and spectacular way. So let me ask each of the other people who are sharing this with me, and Mark, you'll be last if it's okay. First, Mara, to basically to speak about yourself and your involvement with this conversation and then Tony. So Mara, first. There we go. I unmuted so that there was no background noise. Uh, I'm Mara Williams, Curator Emerita from the Brattleboro Museum and Art Center. I'm the one coming to you from Brattleboro, Vermont right now. And I've known the Pucker Gallery um, since I, shortly after I got out of um, undergraduate. And one of the reasons I always loved this gallery was one of the few galleries on the greater Newbury Street area back in the 1970s, uh, where I would walk in and people would talk to me about art. <laughs> you know, I had been a theater major. I was a designer. Um, I was exploring more and more and more contemporary art. I was fairly classically trained as a way of coming to terms with the art of the time I was living in, not just having been studying at the Victorian Albert Museum, which is part of my background. And um, so I've always had a particular fondness for Pucker because they didn't have the black turtleneck, if you don't know, you don't know attitude. And I think that art is something that is of the mind and the heart and the spirit of an artist and everyone looking at it has a mind, a heart and a spirit and it's a coming together with an object of contemplation and the, that experience is full of joy and promise and it's not something to be afraid of and it's not something to be snooty about. And so I love doing these webinars because we get to talk about art with, with passion and conviction for what's actually in front of us. How wonderfully said. Actually, Mara, when we opened the gallery in 67, um, I drafted a mission statement that was, I, it feels like it was mimeographed. It was so long ago. Um, and it was, it really said much of what you just said. And I think the advantage I had was that I didn't grow up in a business setting that I really wanted to, uh, with my wife, Sue, create a place of gathering and sharing openness and kindness. Um, little did I know that we probably picked one of the most difficult cities in the country to do that in simply because of the art institutions that were already here had clearly defined missions and clearly defined senses of who was um, appropriate to see the art that was being shown. And I just said the other day, and I may be entirely wrong, that the art scene in Boston did not flourish the way that it should have because these institutions did not encourage the work of the individual artists in this community. And only now is there some kind of reckoning saying that maybe we should be a little more inclusive at this point. And it's very, very difficult to make that transition 150 years into your being. 
So the fact that the gallery was at that point, um, hopefully welcoming to you is one of the criteria for us staying in business. People need to feel that they can come into a space and need to feel that the art itself is available to them. Um, and Mark's work more than most of the things that we show immediately manifests for individuals as this welcoming um, and sense of joy. So Tony, sorry. I, but I'm Tony Fusco. I'm the co-producer of the Boston International Fine Art Show, which just had its 24th year at the Boston Center for the Arts Cyclorama. Um, myself and my partner, Robert Four have been involved in promoting the arts for about 45 years here in Boston. Uh, we have an agency that works with all sorts of arts organizations, theater, music, dance, museums, you name it. And um, also uh, in the 90s started working with the commercial side of the arts, um, auction houses, galleries, and um, commercial art institutions. So I've watched the, the art world in Boston change significantly from the early 1970s when I first arrived here in Boston, fresh from Paris and looking to, uh, looking to have a, a little Paris in Boston um, to now when um, it has so diversified um, that it's, um, it's an amazing world out there in terms of contemporary art in the Boston area, but Pucker Gallery was always one of my favorites. I followed a number of the artists that exhibited at Pucker over the years and um, being right on Newbury Street, hosting uh, openings, having that wonderful building where we would go upstairs and downstairs and see all the work right. on every level uh, was always such a joy. I was um, thrilled to meet Mark Davis many years ago personally and then to find out that he was the creator of these incredible sculptures that um, we're gonna be looking at. Uh, and I've seen that part of Mark's life evolve so significantly and certainly with a lot of support from Pucker Gallery, a lot of support from the Boston community. It's, uh, it's nice to see a Boston artist who has stayed in Boston. One of the things I always rail against is uh, the artists who start here, who get their foothold here, whether they're visual artists or musicians or actors, and then uh, for want of opportunity, for want of exposure, for want of a way of making their living as artists, have to move on and move to New York or Chicago or LA or Miami. Um, Mark's one of the one of the artists who has been around for a long time and who has made his home here. So really appreciate that. It's a lovely way to say it. And also to, to have Mark locally makes it much more fun for the gallery, for the staff, yeah. his interaction with everybody here from bringing in the pieces he completes to his holiday cookies uh, are much valued. And I really, really believe in, in the opportunity that COVID has reinforced my belief in being together is critical, being together is important. And Mark certainly does that wonderfully. So Mark, you're up after all these nice comments. Okay. Um, uh, I didn't realize I had to say something. Uh, so I'm Mark Davis, the sculptor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, uh, would you like a little uh, history of, of me and my work? At this point, whatever, whatever you'd like to say, or you can do it during the conversation that we have. If you know, I, if, if I think that's that that'll work out beautifully. I think we'll just we'll just make it organic that way. All right, whatever. Let's move to the first photograph. Where there you are again? You're going to have to talk. There you go. There I am. This is my new studio. I uh, I was working. I bought a house in Roslindale. Um, 23 years ago. And um, there's a garage attached that not not attached to the house. And I, I finally uh, was able to, for various things, uh, make a studio where the garage had been. 
uh, raising the roof up to 15 feet and adding another 30 feet to the front of it. And that's my new space. And I, uh, it's, it's quite wonderful to work in. So there's me at the anvil. Um, and I suppose it must make people surprised to see that there's, it's like an auto body shop. It's a metal shop. It's it basically the, uh, everything that's made is made out of metal. So it's all about shaping, forming, um, heating, soldering, um, sanding. And then in the back, which you really can't see, is a full spraying booth where I do the spraying of, of the uh, colors, the airbrush colors. It's a wonderful space. It's got, so I, I have a little video of it. And one of the things I did, I showed there, there's uh, skylights at the top too, which are really nice. So I cut, that's included in my little video. Great. So we'll come to that later, I assume, um, Caroline, and we can look at the first image. So, uh, go ahead, Mark. I, I, uh, um, uh, this is basically made uh, to mount on the wall. Uh, it's something that I've decided to do myself that I don't think anyone has done yet. And no, I haven't seen anybody even trying. Um, basically, it was between you and I, Bernie, we, we started off with some very simple pieces and uh, you encouraged it and I've continued it. And I think it's, it's just working out beautifully. What, what you have is uh, the, the pieces in the back, which are the big gray and uh, earth tone uh, sort of circles are actually um, mounted just an inch from the wall. Uh, they, they come out about an inch. Then in front of that is a mobile just made of four pieces, uh, five pieces, the four uh, white pieces and the one circle in the front there. And they're all uh, balanced on strings and wires and they, they move and they bob around. And then, so that's, that's two layers then actually coming out from the wall. And the third layer, the final outermost layer are these fine lines of black um, pounded out aluminum so that they're very springy and tight. They won't, they won't bend. And I just formed them into sort of easy lines that give, they just give the piece, um, it, it felt to me uh, after I was done with, the whole thing, it felt that it needed one more little touch. And I kept playing with a little something here, a little something there, and realized that wasn't it. It needed something overall that would give it, uh, just break it up a little bit. So that was, that's a third, a, a second full mobile in front of the first one. So we want to all together. Move to the, let's move to the next slide and then we'll go back. Yeah. So what I, what I did is, uh, to the left there, is uh, the cutouts. They're just paper. It's probably about uh, 10 inches uh, square uh, piece of uh, styrofoam board. And um, I just cut the pieces out. This is a new thing for me to um, actually plan it out this well in advance. And the, in the past, my whole process of working was to start with kind of a basic idea, make sections of it that I felt were good and strong as, as a sort of an introduction. And then, then keep adding to it, subtracting from it, maybe even taking things away and playing with it, but finally coming up with the composition. Now I feel these, especially these wall pieces, I'm finding I can get a whole new sense of design, color, form, all of that established first. And then, so that's that was done and I had those black lines just cut out of paper. I wasn't sure how I was gonna do that. To the upper right is actually a big board that's about uh, five feet square that's mounted on, on legs that I cut those pieces out of paper and then I cut the metal from that. I cut the, uh, the background pieces and form the metal and then actually construct the mobile. And actually after everything is constructed and finished, that's when I do the colors. That's when I do the painting. 
So that's Wonderful. sort of the, the quick story of the process. So this is, yeah, this is the this scale is. question. Mm -hmm. You said that the colored paper cutout that is on my computer screen on the left hand side mm -hmm. um, was a certain scale. But then you completely shifted to say that this black and white and the, mo the wall mounted mobile itself is five feet across. The uh, the board is about five feet across, so I have something to work within. I think that the finished piece is forty two okay. inches wide. Yeah. Oh, yeah. much bigger than I would have thought from the end. Yeah, yeah, and surprisingly, I don't I don't do a grid or anything. I, I just I I actually, as you can see, there's there's a certain transition happening from the the picture on the left to the upper right. Um, there are some things that have changed slightly because as I'm cutting out the paper in real, in, in, in the actual, uh, uh, pers um, um, you know, proportion that I want, sometimes I, I change things a little bit as I'm cutting, but yeah, it's, it's a pretty big piece. It's lovely. It's actually hanging in the gallery at this point. Yeah. And the title Mark is called understanding eternity. Yeah. Um, in the past, you and I used to joke about titles, and then you've told me oh, yeah. the role of creating the titles. So I think I'm going to leave it to you to explain the title. Oh, that's the hardest part for me is is coming up with titles. Uh, it's a kind of an intuitive alchemy. <laughs> um, my dad was an English professor, and he he was very good with words. He was a poet also. Um, his poet was not so good. His poetry was not so good. Um, but uh, he, he loved words. He loved playing with words. And <sighs> there's something about the swirling energy. Part of it is the black lines that give it to me this feeling of infinite space. And that's just my own personal feeling. And it, it's, it, it, it certainly wasn't begun with that idea. But after it was done, I thought this has a really wonderful feeling of sort of universal expression. And um, so understanding eternity just had a nice, comfortable feeling for it to me. That's I have, lovely. I have to tell you, when I saw this piece, I literally gasped because I thought it was so magnificent. And then when I read the title, it all seemed to fall into place. It, it, for me, it was, oh, of course, that's what this piece is called. The title seemed to be just, I don't know, um, I guess when, when people have children and the baby is born, you look at the baby and you say, what will I call this baby? And that name just resonates with this piece. It's, it's quite amazing. That's a wonderful year. That's a nice way to say it. I think also the notion of titling the piece when it's completed indicates that the process itself of creation has artistic and aesthetic standards. And then for you to step back and to be somewhat amazed by what you've done, respond to it and say, this is what I think it says to me, therefore this is the title, is really quite a lovely way of approaching creation of any piece. And certainly this one uh, has that both sense of energy um, I wish that it was true that all of us um, could understand eternity, um, but the, I think if, if, if anything, I would have put a question mark by it. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Ne ne next is the um, visit to your studio via video, um, and yeah. we're up, up above the, the big doors are uh, pieces discarded come into play later. Oh boy, okay, that's copy. You're, you're the tour director. All right, these are just, these are metalworking tools. There you go. There's all the tools. There's my, my, I, that's, those are my best friends, those pieces of wood. And uh, yeah, the wire. This is the soldering area over here where the silver solder happens. Now we're going to the paint booth in the back. Which I have to keep kind of curtained off. Now I went up to show show the skylights just to, just to get an idea of what the upper part of it looks like. This is my main bench down here that I work on. 
and everything homemade by Mark Davis. And uh, and here's my trusty sink. Um, that's it. It's really I just wanted it to be quick. Wonderful tour, tour of Julia Child's kitchen brought to you by Mark Davis. It's a yeah. wonderful moment to sort of see, I think for people to visit into a space to realize that all of these areas are relevant to the finished mobile that you create. So thank you very much for wandering through the space with us and to move to um, among the new pieces, certainly one of my favorites. Part of it has to do with, and it's hard to do this, we maybe sh should have done as a video. As it turns, you literally move from one side to another, one palette to another, and one sense of the coordination, not only the shapes, but also the colors in such an extraordinary way. The other thing I would just say to this, and I would love Mara to talk about it as well, is that the base on almost all of your works is integral to the finished piece. And certainly in this piece, it adds a sense of suspension, if you will, um, and at the same time, the space for the piece itself to live within that art which your eye completes. But Mara, you're wonderful at, at responding to things, and I'd love to hear you think about this piece oh, out loud. Well, I think that that um, the, the, the central colorful part of, of the um, of, of, of the piece it relates to flora, fauna, you know, an egg-like form, um, different kinds of leaves or clouds or movements or, you know, so, so there's this relationship to the natural world. There's a relationship to our history, Alexander Calder. Um, um, and there's a relationship to children's toys, the way you have this wonderful string and it dangles. Um, and I, we all had toys like that. Um, but the, the part of this sculpture that really makes the energy pop is exactly where there is nothing. So between the, this black tripod base that has a root-like structure, it also has um, you, you know, all those kind of bristly kind of cones and things you find on the ground or the, the bottom part of a flower that breaks off. And, um, but that matte black against this you know, sort of spinning globe of the world, energy pulse of leaves blowing and wind and sky moving. And it's that relationship to gravity and defying gravity that is the one inch between the color and the black that interests me the most. Mm. Tony? You know, I, I, um, this piece I really, think the change of color as the piece turns is, <clears throat> and again with the title, First Blush, is just an amazing um, view. When, when that piece turns around and that egg-shaped piece in the middle actually does blush, it's, um, it's really something to see. And I love the suspension over the little tabaret table if you want if you will for me that's like a little tabaret table and the whole piece feels just lifted and suspended in uh in air it's 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 really quite amazing the balance that mark can achieve with these pieces i have no idea how that happens every little inch must turn the sculpture in a different direction or a different it does yeah uh, very much, Amazing. very much so. Yeah. So Mark, you want equal time or you're okay if we... Um... <laughs> no, just, just to say that, that um, when I was trying to come up with this idea, the, the whole, the, whole uh, the overall uh, structural or engineering concept is, is a mobile, a full on mobile, full on hanging mobile, but condensed into a, you know, a globe of sorts um, hanging down over a base. And um, it's it's very much to me like a little universe, um, a universe that's sort of packed into a space. I mean, it's not packed, but it, it's, it's, it's con condensed into a, into a sort of a spherical space. And, and the fact that it's floating above sort of this gravity 
thing, this, this sort of solid thing in black makes it magical. It's just magical. But um, when I started out trying to figure out how to, what I was going to do with these, I really liked the idea of the one that what's, what's turned out to be this egg-like shape, having, having that as a kind of a background. And I realized that as that background turns, I can change the whole color palette. So that's what got me excited and, and working in this way. And, um, and so then, then again, it's layers coming out from that central focus. And um, and you're right, Mara. My little my little um, Calder nod was kind of fun to add in there as a I I don't know just a, a thank you Calder. <laughs> that's, <laughs> it's so always that's, nice. it's always nice to be grateful to others um, in many ways. But I think in addition, the nice thing looking at it in the two views is the variety of forms and shapes that play into it and finally in the gallery because of the lighting the shadows dance at the <laughs> same time so it's important for these are beautiful photographs of each of the pieces but for most people to think about these in conjunction with the shadows that they cast mm -hmm. and the movement of the uh, pieces very gently uh, creates a variety of patterns that are very 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 pleasing so we're going to look now at what's called a video or home video, one or the other. This is just You're my living room to show people that my living room has nothing is nothing to do with my art. <laughs> it's, it's very different. Very different. So from, I, don't have, I don't have any pieces of my own art. You go from your but, artwork mid-century modern back to you know 1890s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's funny. It's just what I'm comfortable with. That is fun. Yeah, it is. yeah, it is. Well, I think everyone chooses spaces that they work in, spaces that they play in. Um, and certainly yeah. it's nice to have been part of that. The next movement that we're going to make is into some of the people and artists in the past that really have been part of your world, Mark. And I'd love for you to talk just a bit about each one, if you'd like. Um, it's, I don't know, I don't, it's interesting for me to talk with other artists um, about their influences and their ideas. Um, and we all have our own story about that. Um, for me, ever since I was a kid, uh, it was, well, at, being a, a young kid, I, uh, my parents only took us to the, um, to the really classical uh, art sections of museums. They didn't even show us anything contemporary. Um, but as I started to grow, I, 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 I certainly started with Calder. That was this huge rush of recognition when I saw uh, a book on him. Um, from there, I, it was all three-dimensional sculpture that I was inspired by one after the other after the other. Of course, um, you know Henry Moore and people like that. Uh, Noguchi, but um, now as time goes on, a, a, a huge, of course, Van Gogh ended up being um, when I started working with airbrush color. I that was the that was the person that uh, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to start. I never went to school. I was a terrible student, and I just wanted to learn on my own and figure it out for myself. Um, and so. Matisse, of course. I mean, the, look at those cutout shapes. I, I, I don't, I do not let myself look at them anymore, any of those cutout shapes, because I don't want to copy them. But it's clearly imprinted in my mind. And um, I've gone beyond Matisse now to, to more contemporary painters. And it's about the, it's about the shape. It's about the color. It's about um, just the, the, the ideas of colors inter, interrelating with each other. So Matisse is, of course, one of the great ones. This Julio Gonzalez, I, I don't know anything else that he's done, but this piece makes me laugh and smile. And I just think, you know, good for you. you it's, it's a strong sort of masculine sculpture. Um, I probably made out of all steel, but then with these just whimsical touches that, that just make me smile. So. That was that's that kind of thing just hits me really hard. Sometimes, as many artists feel, uh, you you're just going down the street 
looking out the window of your car or walking and some part of a tree or a twisted piece of metal or something will just be the most joyous thing in the whole world to see. And those things just, they all just add up into your mind. So, okay, so there's a few more. There's the Noguchi, of course, he's, he's a huge inspiration to me. And uh, Leger, I, I, I find him absolutely wonderful. And Stuart Davis is now much more recently uh, become a huge hero of mine uh, because of his playful way he, he approaches color, form, placement. And it's, it's just, look at that, it's alive. It's just jumping, all those pieces are jumping and dancing around. And that's what I would hope to achieve in, in my own work. And I Mara, think do you have any thoughts about these um, designated um, resources? Completely unsurprising. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's interesting having seen um, uh, Blush um, and seeing the Stuart Davis and, and that sort of tonal range that you played with in that piece is very much related to, to this, this particular piece. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, yeah. I wanted to move on to the next piece, but also um, I've gotten, you know, well into this and not even quoted Brother Thomas yet. So <laughs> let me share this one note that I like a lot, which is art is an intuitive statement about humanity. Otherwise nature would be enough. And especially looking at this piece, Mark, called Traveling East, the notion that you take us to places and spaces and experiences that um, energize us and give us joy um, so that you take us beyond what nature is, yet there are natural forms in your pieces. And it grows out of, I think, an intuitive grasp of your humanness and our humanness. So Thank that's up to you to respond to. I, 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 uh, thank you. I think that's very nicely put. Um, you know, I've been doing this now, burning with you. Uh, I've been doing it for what, 25, 28 years. And um, so I've, I have, I'm now at this point where um, a lot of things come to me much more intuitively and I'm much more um, confident in, in my decisions. So, uh, something like this, I, I realized that, uh, oh dear, how do I say it? Um, that, okay, I, want, I wanted, I, I've done so many pieces where there's a, a strong, a, a, a small, this is very small, this is just a few inches across, and um, like three inches, four inches, and the idea has always been that there's one strong piece on one side with a, uh, a, a wire and then a, a very light piece on the other side. If it's visually light, that's, that's nice. Sometimes it's just uh, the, the balance is very light. But here I liked the idea. I had done these, uh, these um, wires with a, with a wooden ball on the end. And I, I liked the idea of that bursting through something spherical. Um, and it's, it's just, it's, it's just, as Mara said, that it, it's like toys. I mean, I'm just playing with toys. I really am. And I'm making my own toys in this case. And, and, and so the idea of it breaking through a, a circle was great, but as I cut out pieces of paper and played with it, I thought, oh, it's very, very clunky. But when I finally looked at the edge of the paper that I had, of the circle that I had cut down, there was a simple line there and I went, Oh, that's it. Just keep it incredibly light and simple and delicate and still have that line bursting through it. So then getting the engineering, the balance to work on that was quite a task, but I, I finally got it to, to go. And then of course, making it white, making the piece that sort of balances it on the other side, a strong red, and then giving it this, uh, you know, this playful curly cue, um, and keeping the colors very simple. It just, it just, I felt that was very successful. 
Tony, any thoughts? And it's fun. There's there's a there's a humor in it, and it's fun. I, a lot of I find that a lot of the smaller pieces that you do have this quirky sort of humor. I mean, I I live yeah. and I I saw somebody traveling east. I felt like the whole piece was traveling east. I felt like that little that little ball was breaking <laughs> through and traveling east. Um, it's, it's, I get a chuckle out of some of these pieces that are just, and the balance again is amazing, but, um, but the humor for me is something really special too. Great. One more quote I would share from Thomas, which seems to me to apply much to what you just said, Mark, is we do live life forward and understand it backwards. <laughs> so having created the piece in a forward motion and then now looking at it and sharing your thoughts about it, it enables us to, I think, better appreciate how you got to traveling east. <laughs> Good. Let's Good. move on to diametric growth, if we could. There you go. What a spectacular and splendid piece. Mara, this is all yours. Oh, <laughs> what can you say? Um, uh, you know, I feel like Isadora Duncan is in the garden for me at this. You know, this, this, this <laughs> That's how, wonderful. How the base is this delicate, thin sort of a lasso, uh, but this extra curve where you've braced it at the front, I, th th this is really hard for me. I would rather be in front of this piece with a whole group of people and just going right into this one little joint that forms the triangular piece, but it's this the sweep, the curve, the movement. Oh, yes. Yeah. The arm. So, so I'm following the black lines so for the for our audience here. You, know, you start at the bottom of the base. So there's this circle that sweeps up into a, almost a living body, and the arms branch out. Um, and you know, and then you're 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 um, you know certainly um, you know, in in apple blossoms and, and clouds and flowers and pools of water, um, but it's 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 the energy of the dance in this piece, um, you know, or, or perhaps you might want to read it as the energy, you know, the, the pulse of the earth coming up and swirling around. And it's that, that invisible energy um, that eddies through our lives and swirls through our lives. Um, there's something incredibly Asian about this piece in terms of its proportions and balance, its relationship to Yukioi um, uh, and Ikiban. Um, it's easy to see Noguchi as, as one of your serious mentors um, in, in terms of um, who you looked at from the past. Tony? For me, this piece is um, so different than many of the pieces that Mark does. Um, but it is that lightness. I, I, what I really appreciated about it is the lightness, um, the growth, and diametric growth. Again, the title was was perfect for this piece. But it's like sprouting forward with no predetermined shape. It's spring. It's you know sprouting out of the sprouting out of the earth and um, taking whatever shape it's going to take. In, in the in the in the light of day uh, it's again a lot of fun a lot of a lot of um, feeling of growth a lot of feeling of uh, unlimited um, flight of joy here mark and your feelings about the piece now having made it and now looking at it together with us um it's interesting I think the artist is always uh, Remember that story of, I don't know, I hope it's true, uh, Picasso go walking into one of the museum of Spain, in Spain, and with his brush and, and paints, just, you know, redoing a section on the wall and getting called off by the police. Um, you know, you're never quite, you're always kind of wondering about, was this the right choice? Was that the right choice? But um, looking at it now with you got with all of you uh, talking about it, I, 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 I just I I uh, I don't I'm I'm amazed that I was that loose with with it. Um, I uh, 
it's it's it is very Asian. It's it's very it's very delicate. It's um, and I think it's it's it's, it's quite wonderful. Um, that's all I can say. Sounds like it's almost enough to say it looks to me also like the fireworks of nature to the yeah. extent so much visual movement and energy, mm -hmm. those sort of sprouts and the branches <clears throat> all dancing around. And then yeah. it's a, in certain ways, <clears throat> everyone should come to the gallery just to twirl it, to enjoy yeah. the sense of movement and then the gold leaf reflective quality to it just adds a kind of sun-like splendor. Um, when one looks at it in person. So the invitation is um, still standing and the show's up for a while. We're going to look at another part of Mark's universe, um, which is um, high flying ladders spanning um, commissions. Um, one of the joys of the gallery and gallery working with Mark is that there are many, many people who are attracted to his work and then um, show the faith and confidence in the relationship with him in the gallery to commission a piece. Um, and probably, Mark, I don't know, there have probably been at least 50 commissions over all these years. Um, mm -hmm. And they've given you both the freedom because our arrangement is that if it doesn't work, they don't have to buy it. Um, but your willingness to work together with individual patrons and also to hear them Produces mm -hmm. has produced some uh, significantly beautiful pieces for them, and they themselves, and in this particular case, this particular individual who's commissioned this, has been a referral base for it as well. So yeah. it's a real tribute to your ability to create work that has its own artistic merit and integrity for you, and at the same time to bring joy to others. Um, Mara, you might comment on the piece itself. It is, I've been in this space with the piece and it's absolutely splendid. It's a giant room um, and you can get very far back from it. Clearly it was not one of the easier pieces that Mark had to install. So um, <laughs> just, just to give our viewers an idea since they've not been in this beautiful home, are we talking a 25 foot span wide, 15 foot span wide? Oh, I would say, what do you think, Mark? At least 25 feet. Um, yeah, I think I think the piece itself was nine feet across. Nine feet? Uh, yeah, yeah okay. I think so. Um, so. So it must be at least, th that, that central form that you're installing right now must be about 30 inches top to bottom. And that's that standing proud from the wall, 18 inches maybe? Um, actually, from the wall, it's only 12 inches or so. Okay. It always looks more, more, more three-dimensional than it really is. Right, because you, the minute they light it properly, you can have the wonderful positive and negative between the shadow spaces, the right. positive spaces in the piece itself, the negative spaces in the piece itself, and, and then how right. all that works together. So you get um, a much larger volume. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. What I'm curious about, though, which kind of fascinates me, is how densely packed your forms are, and yet they I can see clearly that they still are, you know, immobile. And and up in that space, does it just shift slightly forward and back? I, I can't see how these spaces would twirl around it, each other. It, 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 it's interesting. I mean, because the ceilings are so high and because they have vents for air conditioning and heat, mm -hmm. um, there's always a sort of a slow, subtle little movement, little bobbing that happens. It, it, it seldom really flutters a lot, but it's, you're always aware that these are pieces hanging and that they're all jointed together and each part moves. You're aware of it, but it's, it's, it, it needs to stay as a composition. So it can't, that most, most of the times I don't let anything turn completely all the way around because then you'll just lose the design of it. Okay, well, that, that's important to know. I mean, trying to think of it in- but they, it's an interesting thing. I, yeah, I, I, Bernie would probably say it better than me. Um, but yeah, I, I, um, it's, it's, it's a bit of a signature of mine, and it's the way I construct things that, that it's, that everything is mobile, and um, it's, it's a challenge to do that. There's, there's a lot of engineering difficulties to doing it, mm -hmm. but the, the end result is that there's, there's just a buoyancy to it. Um, 
that does come with the slightest bit of air movement. Well, what's lovely about that is to consider with all these forms that are, are both you know, just abstract forms, beautiful forms in a beautiful color, but they are, you know, they, they have a relationship to a leaf or an, oh, you know, an oval. Yeah, natural form, yeah. yeah. A natural form, I, I'm yeah. gonna say biomorphic, but that's a little, you know, sort of insider story here. Um, <laughs> but what I like to think about, you know, particularly since you're obviously, in addition to these matte um, paints, you're using some iridescent paints and you're even using gold leaf, um, is that movement creates a shimmer of movement as opposed to a shimmer of light moving across it. But it has resonance for me, who grew up by the ocean on Cape Cod, of you know, how light plays against trees that have a little bit of motion in them, or just a little gentle yeah. breeze. Yeah, so yeah, when, yeah. The water, when the water ripples and the sun yeah. there, it shimmers. And so it, it seems there's just another correspondence to um, light in nature, not just form in nature when you do a piece like this. Very good, yes, very true. Very true. There are times that I'll create something, and I, I definitely um, consciously, when I'm when I'm putting all the pieces together and really finally finishing it up and tightening all the 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 the, the, the piece itself, and then and then when I paint it, I emphasize that more. But the idea of the sunlight coming in through the trees and hitting an object, that is that's heaven to me. That's the the height of what I could do. If I can create anything that gives that impression, I'm thrilled. And thank you very much for uh, catching that. I appreciate that. Yeah, even in a flat picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's true. Just, it's an amazing. You it's see an it amazing. a little bit on your gold leaf pieces. Is why I'm, you know, I'm sure I, you know, I'm confident it does it in person because I can even in a hint I can see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do. They shimmer really nicely. Absolutely. Tony, do you have some thoughts about this? I particular? just love the movement of a piece like this. I'm just transported from one side of the piece to the other. And with the, the, the wind and the speed lines and the leaves blowing, and it's just so much fun to travel along with the piece. Um, that's my impression of it. Um, and I'm sure when it's even slightly in movement, that feeling of being transported is even is even more enhanced. Well, let me just offer one other thing that I, I, I just thought of. In addition to really a formal beauty that you create and this idea of movement and light and references to nature, um, in, in some ways, these are doodles writ large. There's something so, you know, that effortless imagination of the doodle, the artist just sort of sitting there and doodling a shape here and then adding another shape to it. And, you know, and I know that you're, it's a much more complex thing, but what it, what it says to me is no matter how much you've worked on a piece, you have this ability to retain that spontaneous freshness of a, of a doodle. That is the nicest thing you can say. Thank you. You're welcome. So it's such a pleasure selling doodles. <laughs> Let's move to the, to, the next, to the next piece, please. I love it. These colors send me. Yeah. 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 So yeah the, idea, the idea with this was to, to have a, a one piece base, you know, just one strong uh, leaf, definitely a leaf shape. Mm -hmm. And then and then leave little bits of leaves flying up from it. And uh, honestly, this, I don't know why, but uh, there, it, when you look down from above on it, um, I, I must have repainted that six or seven times mm -hmm. and just sanded it all down, painted it white again and tried again. Nothing really worked. And finally I got this, uh, this, this color to work. Um, it's interesting. One of the one of the uh, um, uh, difficulties or, or, or challenges in 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 my painting, what I do is that um, in a painting, in a real painting, the pe the colors are right up next to each other. There, the relation to each other is is right there. 
But here, these are bits of color in space. And to get them to grab each other and to fit together and to work together is a, is a mysterious thing that I've, I've just learned how to, certain tricks that I've got uh, help that, giving something a really dark edge like that somehow grabs the pieces and brings them together. I don't, it's, I don't understand it. I really don't, but that's a, a huge challenge for me. And uh, I feel like I've, I've worked well with that, but it is a challenge. That's, that's all. <laughs> no, but it's true too, Mark, if it weren't a challenge, then it seems to me that you would be a production mobile maker. <laughs> the notion right. that each, each, opera, each of these works are opportunities for you to one, define an opportunity and see it as a challenge and then to respond to it. And then that enables each of the pieces to have their own personality. Yes. That's what people tend to respond to as far as I see over all the years that we've worked together. And that it also becomes the instigator of your own personal growth. Yes. True. So it's on, on, true. To, on to one more quote of Brother Thomas's, which we had discussed some time ago, that's going to come up on the screen, so maybe others can remember it as well. But I just thought it felt so appropriate for what you're doing and what you have done. Jump and then sprout wings. The whole notion of each of the pieces that you have uh, created over this long history of working together it's nearly 950, almost 1,000 pieces. We should have a, a birthday party when we get to 1,000, but I'm happy, with, I'm happy with whatever it is, 920, 925. And to realize that of the works that you've created, virtually all but the works in the gallery have been spoken for, that they exist in people's homes, in their lives, um, energizing them, bringing them back, uh, on so many occasions. And after having done this for 54 years, I can tell you that doesn't happen often mm -hmm. with art. Frequently it's a one of, but the reality of people living with your work, and I think we said this at the very beginning, the goal of having the works purchased is to have them in homes that bring people pleasure and in turn become ambassadors for the art itself. You're the best example of that. Um, approach to living. Uh, I've rarely, with all the artists over all these years, been involved with someone whose work itself generates the joy and pleasure for the individuals who own it, and they become literally the ambassadors for Mark Davis. The next piece is one of a perfect example of oh. people who I would describe as uh, recidivists. They are multiple offenders of loving <laughs> to own your work, um, and this piece is hanging in their home on the Cape, and it's simply glorious. But they've lived with your work, and to that extent, they were drawn to this again. So Mara, this is really a wonderful one for you, and then tell me. It is so perfect for somebody who lives on the Cape. I just, it, I, what town do they live in so I can go visit them when I'm home the next? <laughs> Go ahead. They're also they're terrific people too. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the, you know, the specialness that is Cape Cod, um, you know, and I'm sure every ocean is special in its own way because it's water and what, what else? Water, sky, sun, sunsets, you know, on the East Coast, um, there's the dawn and then there's that reflected light of sunset that happens on Cape Cod, unless of course you're way down the end and you're looking back and you're actually seeing the sunset over the water. Um, but that, that quality of where green, blue, gray meets gold, peach, pink. Um, and, and then the sparkle um, that happens on the water, it's, it's all in this piece. Um, but there's also sort of this sort of flying, um, flying motion in this piece where, where it's, as if the, it's as if the entire landscape has decided the sea needs to be up in the air with the air at the same time. Um, you know, that, that, okay, well, you know, yes, the sea is gravity, it's low, and, and it can be placid, and it can be very much of an uproar, but right now, I feel like the sea wanted to take flight and join the sunset 
join the dawn, that, that, that flying through the air seemed more fun to it this particular day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <it's> great description. <laughs> no, it's just absolutely lovely. Tony, um, I'm not sure I'd want to be you in responding to it after tomorrow. <laughs> I, I, I think this is a perfect example of what Mark was talking about earlier with the colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Getting, getting those colors, they're not on a canvas, they're not right next to each other, they're overlapping, they're just at a distance from each other, and getting those colors all to work together in this way is just, um, it's just wonderful, it's amazing. Um, it reminds me of that that installation that you did at the hospital in Chicago. Um, yeah, yeah. Just, just a wonderful shapes, wonderful colors, and of course, you read this piece just reads when you say "over the moon." That's it. That's what this piece reads. Um, there's no mystery about it. It's just that ah, that feeling of ah, here it is, over the moon, um, mm -hmm. and uh, just lovely. Wonderful color. Yeah. It's where we have been the past few nights. If you've been looking at the moon. It's been gorgeous. Right? It's yeah. been spectacular no matter where you are. And to see it even in the early morning when there is light in the sky, at least out of our window, it's still suspended there. So the sense of the magic of nature. And then for you to be able to capture that and make it available as a gift to others is really quite, quite remarkable. Next so, to me. No, no, before you, I want to ask a couple of technical questions or maybe draw people's eyes to some things I'm seeing. Um, and it, it relates back to Tony's comment about how the colors are working together. Uh, there's this you know, beautiful lightness um, of these convex or concave shapes, depending on which direction that they're in. There's this, this very light, um, floating material, floating shapes. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this beautiful color palette that is very carefully chosen and modulated. But it's the ombre that you give each piece that gives it such depth, it, it, it heightens the curve or it attenuates an edge or it moves the eye along, you know, I'm thinking in, in the, in the um, orange pieces. You know, yeah, it's moving the eye laterally on the lateral plane. On other ones, it's curving you around. So you're taking these very thin pieces of metal, and and they're still as light as ever, and yet they they have a quality of fullness, and that's your painterly quality, not your sculptural quality. And it's quite masterful. And I think those two things coming together is a real testimony to your technical um, abilities marrying to your aesthetic abilities. Nicely said. Let's move on to the next one. Oh, these are so funny. <laughs> right. Praying mantis. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I couldn't call it praying mantis. I just thought that, no, I, I don't want to do that. I don't know why I, I felt that that was cheapening it. So I gave it a, sort of a fancy name. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, that was that was all whimsy, you know, just whimsy. Oh, right. It's so you know? <laughs> it's just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Strutting your yeah, stuff. That's it. Can... Oh, definitely. You, you yeah. <laughs> can walk the walk, baby. Yeah. <laughs> and again, you know, just, just happy accidents with um, scraps of paper as I'm cutting things out and looking down and saying, oh, well, that kind of scrap there, if I, if I, put the whole circle up higher, hmm, then what if I had little feet for it, hmm, and then I, oh yeah, and then I, oh yeah, and you know, just having fun. <laughs> Which is, Thanks. Mark, what, what is transferred to so many others who enjoy the work. Let's look at the wilds of the jungle. We should have background music, I assume. <laughs> Tony? Again, that, that shape that you created in the other piece that just suspension. This is, a, again, a whole world that is suspended over that platform. And you don't know if it's being suspended by this, you know, by the string above it, or if it's being held aloft by some force coming out of that platform. Um, 
again, it just delicate, interesting shapes, lots of movement, lots of uh, lots of imagination. And um, Wilds of the Jungle is again a kind of a perfect title. <laughs> What's interesting, Art, what's ahead, interesting about this piece, that the, the one, um, the, the piece we saw earlier was actually much smaller than this piece. This one has got a lot of volume. You're talking um, 26 inches high, 22 wide, 22 front to back, you know, just, you know, so it's, it's got the volume of a large cube. I mean, it's, although it's light, yeah. You're, yeah. but that's, that's a lot of real estate for tabletop sculpture. <laughs> yeah, it's probably really more 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 suited for a, a pedestal uh, in a in a you know set out from a corner of a room um, or something like that. I honestly, I'm not sure. Well, I know where I would put it if I had the right kind of house. I don't have the right kind of house. It's those houses that you open and they've got the hallway with the staircase in the back. I put mm -hmm. a giant round table right there and I would put that right there and it would there be you go. Piece of the world. <laughs> I don't have that yeah. kind of a house, but that's what I would put it in. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think there's a fine real estate agent I know, Mara. Maybe we can put you in touch with her. <laughs> Mark, it, it's absolutely a um, wonderful, wonderful piece. As ever, we managed to go beyond our time, and I want to end with this final piece. But, Mark, I'd love for you to talk about Question. what I think we all spend our lives doing. <laughs> um, in circles. In circles. Well, it does happen. <laughs> um, um, yeah, uh, uh, this again was sort of, uh, you know, I, 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 I do so many, especially smaller pieces. This is an uh, in-between size. Um, uh, it's not small, it's not large. So uh, the idea of, of um, one piece that actually goes down into the base, um, I really liked that idea and I wanted to make that work. It's, it was actually uh, very difficult to get the engineering to work on that. Um, the, the little blue strip is is actually uh, something like 16 inches across. So it, it makes quite a big statement as it goes around. Um, um, you know, that's that was really what I had in my mind as I made it. I just wanted, I wanted rather than having uh, having everything sitting above the base, I wanted it to integrate into it more. Um, it's interesting, Bernie, you talked about a long time ago, we talked about um, this and uh, you mentioned that there was a, I had sort of uh, formed a language of my own and, and these shapes uh, are, they're my language. They're, the, 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 they're organic, they're, they're, this is, a, it feels a little bird-like to me or fish-like because of the coloring of the base of it. And um, yet there's a, the, what I like is 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 not being wedded to any particular image, so that there there's a poetry that kind of emerges from that, and so that so that as well is even though it does have this sort of animal a sort of an animal feeling to the base, it, it then I kind of throw that all up with with the uh, juxtaposition of a big hanging disc that moves within it and around it. Um, Tony. That's, I just wanted to have Tony's thoughts and Mar, if you would like to say something and then I will end. Well, again, um, I, I see the humor right. in this piece, but also the engineering is just amazing. The engineering is amazing. Um, to have that blue strip circle that way, uh, to have the, the red egg shaped form actually move through the base, um, it's a very complicated piece presented very simply. I don't know if I can say that, but it's a fair, <laughs> if you look at it, you say, oh, this is a very simple piece, but it's so complicated once you start looking at it. it it's another magical piece for me because it, it, you know, I could bring to it so many ideas of, of forms in nature. You know, I've, um, I've read berry bushes down at the bottom of my hill. Um, that that the, the leaves are starting to turn this sort of russet gold color, but the berries are still very strong and there's sky above it. And that's the side that the moon comes up on. And so uh, it's, I'm not saying it's descriptive of that, but it's evocative 
of that. And I think that another time I might come to this and I, I you know, might see that it's, it's this, you know, just the balance point on the, the top, you know, right, right, the, 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 the line that, again, you've attenuated the color. So you go from a dark ombre almost up to white. It almost disappears against the white background that this was shot on before you get to the curve and then the second curve in this beautiful blue, this beautiful, beautiful sort of sparkling blue. Um, and, um, and I might just think of it in terms of rhythm and weight and power and the dance and then, you know, and then as Tony pointed out earlier, there's the humor, the humorous interpretation of it, if you anthropomorphize it. Uh, and it can be all of those things um, and just a dance in and of itself, poetry in and of itself, visual poetry. Um, and I think that, that um, your artwork is generous in that way, that it provides huge open spaces for a viewer to come at it and have this wonderful conversation in their head or with guests around a dinner table um, with the, all of us here today. Um, and and it's, there's a generosity of spirit in these pieces. Lovely. Mark, I just want to end with a, another quote, but it, Mara, it's as if you were sitting next to me and the quote is, art is a constant dance to the music of openness and unlearning. And I love the fact that both of you use both of the words open or openness and dance. And the notion of unlearning from my point of view really responds to the notion of constantly striving to move to another place. Each piece that Mark has created over these years and 25 or 28 or a lot of years and 900 plus pieces or a lot of pieces that out of that unlearning has come both the art and the openness of the spirit and the sense of joy and delight that his work has provided to all who have enjoyed it. So I'm very grateful to all of you who both participated in this uh, opportunity to talk with Mark and about Mark and about his work and all who tuned in and who will see this in the future. So thank you. Good afternoon. The sun is still barely shining. Bye-bye. Thanks.